welcome to the stream let's continue working on the game we're gonna continue where we left off last stream and that is um, the weapon upgrade functionality or the, or the level up for the weapon we we have we have done the mechanism for, for leveling up uh, what is left to do is uh, some, some, some work on the UI um, well, first let's uh, let's do a recap of, of uh, what we've done last time. Yeah. So so the first thing that we've done was uh, refactoring for the um, detection of, of of left clicking of of the left mouse button, which uh, which is used for for the weapon slots and now also for the weapons. Um, yeah. So. There's not really much much of a difference. You you can place weapons as as as, uh, as it was previously possible, uh, but now the the difference is that you can click on a weapon, and the panel on the left uh, shows up. And from this panel, okay, you can close the panel obviously, and from this panel uh, you are able to level up the weapon uh, using coins. Right now we have a. A big amount of coins, but uh, yeah, using coins, you, you are able to to level up the weapon and make it more powerful. And this already happens uh, behind the scenes. Uh, the only thing that uh, that we have left to do is um, displaying the, the 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 info about the weapon in in the panel itself. We we only have the the, the current info in the in the button on the or, or on the button. So, so that's what uh, what's left to do uh, for this task. And the second thing that we're gonna work on today is the first power that we're gonna add to the game, which is which is the zap. It, it, it's a power similar to to the. I mean, it, it is the power that we we have actually implemented for the prototype, which is basically somewhat like a laser. You, you you will be able to to right click on enemies and you're basically just gonna uh, damage them uh, you know manually and this will be uh, useful for this this case that you see right here we have the healers that we've done in uh, in uh, in, a, in a past stream and uh, the 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 healers uh, won't be affected by the by the weapons or or they might be affected but uh, they won't be killed by the weapons probably most probably and you'll have to manually come with your power and right click on them to to, to kill them so uh, yeah that's one thing that uh, that the powers are useful for uh, but but first yeah we're gonna continue working on the on the on the weapon level up system okay so let's uh, let's do that Okay. We yeah. Uh, the, the the first thing that we have to do is something that uh, it was the thing that we we left off uh, last stream with. Um, we have a problem with. Uh, let's go to the weapon. We have a problem with the with the localized string that we that we use for for or or the, or the class that we use from the localization package. And it seems that uh, somehow Odin has a problem with um, with this uh, data type from from the localization package. It doesn't display it correctly. Um, we can see an example here. Yeah. So this string reference, it, it, this is the UI that should appear for the for the class that we use. But if we use it in a um, in a um, in a mono behavior or a, or, a, or on a scriptable object. Um, this is the UI that we get, and that th this is not correct. And the problem seems to be from Odin. And the great part is is that uh, I've uh, checked the the changelog from Odin, and they actually do specify that that they they've done some uh, some modifications to to Odin uh, for this specific case, or or more like for the localization package in general. Let me show you. So if, even if even in the the, the last version that they've, they've they've released, they 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 said that they fixed some things. 
for the localization package and there are some more some more stuff related to the to the localization package in in previous uh, uh, in previous releases I think th this might be this might be all but yeah those are those are the the, the changes but yeah they've added the uh, support for, for the localization package so what we're going going to do is we are going to update Odin in the uh, in the project. So after that, we should get the the, the correct um, the correct rendering for that for that class that we use the uh, localized string class. So let's do that. Let's go to my assets. Let's search for Odin. Yeah, we do have the the latest version. Let's just import it. Yeah, and after this, we should get the correct, correct value or the, or the correct rendering. It's compiling. Uh, compilation to end. Okay. Cool. And now, as you can see, we have the correct. Uh, the correct rendering for for this so now we can use and we can see the the same thing in the yeah in the definition uh, in the weapon definition so now we can uh, we can define the the name the name of the weapon uh, and actually let's let's do that right now so we are going to get a name from well actually we can't get anything from the game UI Let's select that we want it from game UI and now let's add a new entry here so let's call it uh, dummy dummy projectile weapon and let's put the same name in both languages we I, I currently have two languages set up just so I can see that the that the system is working yeah well that that should do the trick Let's save this and now we should be able to select this game UI dummy projectile weapon. Yep, there we go. So that's cool. Now uh, we have so so we have a name for the for the for the weapon. Um, we have to set up the, the the name in the inspector here. Actually, can I click on this? Yes, I can. We are going to use the localized string event class. We are not going to set it up here because we are going to assign the, the value from code, but we are going to, to set it up so it knows how to how to update text. So uh, no, text mesh pro and we're going to select text in here. So, okay, that's that's that. And now we have to go uh, come to the code. Let's close everything. And go, no. Uh, let's go to our code. Let's see where where in, in UI I think we need to go. Uh, weapon inspector, yeah. So we have we, we do have the title here as a text mesh pro UI co uh, component, but we're not gonna use it like this. Actually, we will need it as a localized string event. And let's do some, some methods in here for setting this up. So set up title is gonna be uh, title dot ring reference gonna be equal to let's see. Let's 
selected weapon dot weapon dot d dot weapon definition dot name bit of a mouthful but that should work now we have to get this and put it in here like so and if we assign the oh, let's well, yeah, wait. let's wait for this to compile but if we assign the the localized string event to, to, the, to the weapon inspector here so it would be this one now theoretically we should have everything set up so when we click on the projectile weapon we should see the name there so let's try it i i hope it's gonna work uh i mean it's gonna work correctly Yes, it did. Uh, the the thing is that I've never I, I never um, worked with those uh, with with you know uh, dynamic names like changing the the, the, the this uh, string reference. I, I've never done that before, or I'm pretty sure I've never done it. Uh, so yeah, so that that uh, that is that. Uh, we have to do some tweaking here. I think I'm gonna the size. Okay, let's do something like that. Uh, I'm gonna do it in here though. So let's see that I want 10 in here and I don't want overflow. Uh, let's do ellipsis, why not? So let's save this and let's play again and let's see what, uh, what's going to happen. Put the weapon, let's click on it and here we go. We have dummy projectile weapon. Whoa. Oh, that's the weapon. Nice. Wonder, I'm wondering what's happening there. I don't like this rendering. I don't. I, I don't know why. It's probably just uh, because of the maybe maybe I've done some some scaling or something and that's probably the reason. I have to fix that. It's it's really annoying. Actually, let's try to fix it right now. Let's see if if we can fix it. Um, what if I put a six in here? No. Oh no, this is the close button. My bad. Uh, you need the upgrade button. Oh, there you go. It was a fractional number. Cool. That's much better. Okay. Okay. So we have the the title. Let's work on the. Let's put this above. Let's work on the subtitle. Subtitle is gonna be uh, very similar. Um, and we're actually going to work with the with the, with the local variable. I'm pretty sure, but we'll see. Okay. So yeah, subtitle. Let's add a localized here as well. And let's set it up. Um, oh, oh, oh. Game UI, add new entry. We're gonna say weapon level. And it's going to be level, level. And those are gonna be smart strings. Well, let's save this. Oh, not close, yeah. So, weapon level. I am going to use a local variable. So, this is going to be level. Let's save this. And now, from the code that's uh, actually no, no, not the piece, private void set up subtitle uh, we have to change the subtitle as well to be a localized string Let's do that subtitle dot 
I don't know how to set a set variable. I need to somehow set the, the, the variables, so... I don't know how to do that. It's probably on the localized string, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So let's try this. This out. Okay, I don't know how to set a local variable. I have to... Okay, let's let's search for this. I need to set uh, to set the, the localized variables. I don't know how to do that. So Unity Docs localization. Yeah, let's look at the, at the docs. So let's go to guides. No, let's go to reference. I guess. Um, smart strings. I guess sources. Parameter? No. Uh, yeah, sure, accept all cookies. I seem to find the the thing that I'm looking for. Maybe if you go into scripting, maybe this will be more. Let's search for uh, actually let's search for event localized string event. Get anything by searching for variable. Um, arguments. This is how it's done. It seems a bit weird using this argument. I don't want to make an object. Arguments that will pass to the smartphone. These arguments are not serialized and will not be this. Uh, but this is not what I want, actually. I mean, That really is. That seems a bit weird. Uh, let's look at the debug view. Maybe maybe we can understand better what's happening here. 
Oh, where's the localized string? Not text mesh pro. Yeah, this one. And so we're looking for something that is called local variables. Okay, I suppose. Um, oh no, here are the format arguments. Those, this is not what I want actually. This is not what I want. Those are the arguments that they're talking about. This is another thing that I want. I want the local variables in the string reference. Okay, so so let's look at the string reference, I guess. Um, or whatever. Yeah, string reference. Actually, I was no, I was yeah, I was in the in the right place. Oh, local variables. Um, how is this used? How can I access it? Add really add that the the name doesn't make sense at all okay sure it's add okay uh, name is level and variable uh, it's gonna be new int variable i guess um Like this. Actually, I think we need to add. We need to add one to the to the level. And actually, I'm gonna do something. Um, weapon level. Let's add something here. Um, public string. No, public in. Stay level, which is deep level plus one. Right. Uh, we haven't assigned the the reference. Here we go. Let's try it again. It doesn't work. An item with the same key has already been added. I, I know it's there. How do I up? Can I update it in some way? Uh, oh, I know what they want me to do. I think I know what they want me to do. Um. Yeah. Okay. I don't. 
still need to add it and to update it. So Get me an I variable. Const um Oh, this is not const I will uh, give it one. Okay. I don't know if it's uh, necessary to, to, to call it first, but we'll see. Run, play. Click on it. It's like cast is not valid. How is it not valid? Okay, um, let's attach the debugger. You know what? see what's happening click on this and we're here load variable oh shit my bad <laughs> okay yeah now, now it makes sense uh, let's continue let's get out of here yeah this is a float variable it should not be a float variable it should be a need variable yep level save and now play we should get the correct value there okay. weapon we click on it we have no errors and uh, let's remove this Uh, it's still working. Hmm. Gave it is a class. Let's search some more. Um, a string. Like this.
actually does update here. Oh, I have a set up. I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, I haven't made the setup here to update the text. Always assume you're the stupid one when, when you have bugs. <laughs> Uh, click on it. Hey, there we go. This gets updated. And now let's get of this. Uh, actually, let's comment it and see if it works without it. It should work without it. I'm, I mean, it would be weird if if that is required. But uh, yeah, who knows? That's right. Okay, projectiles, click on this, click on this. Yep, it works without it. Cool! Okay, so we are, I think, halfway done. Uh, the stats are gonna take a little bit longer, I think. But, yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, so now we have to work with the stats. Um, not entirely sure how to do it. We obviously need the immediate names for the stats. So we we have to to, to somehow save the name of the stats somewhere. And obviously, the best place for them would be on the actual stat thing. Um, but the, the the problem is, I mean, it's not necessarily a problem. I think I have to change the the, the name of the of the class. Let's look a bit of. Uh, what am I using the the link class for? I think I think I'm only using it for stats right now. Yeah, it's only used for stats. Um. I don't think I'm gonna rename it now, but for sure I want to rename this link into into stat. Um, on. Okay. Actually, let's here. Uh, it like this so so what I would like to add here now is I want to add that uh, actually should it be no it's gonna be wait whoa, whoa, whoa. wait but nope no, it's gonna be private uh, localized string name We're gonna serialize the field and we're gonna make a public localized string name um, like this. Okay. So what this is gonna do is now we will be able to change the or to, to assign a name to each stat. So, yeah, let's close those and let's see, uh, how do we do that? What is this? Wait. Um, let's first create some names for, for those stats. So, Let me uh, 
no, 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 just let's just call it damage stat. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to call this into. Have a brain freeze. I don't know how to call it in Romanian. Rate stat fire rate fire rate. Oh. Okay, save this. Now let's close it. This should be damage stat, and this should be fire rate stat. Let's save this now. What we can do is actually first, yeah, let's set up those stats. The name, actually, let's try to do it a little bit faster. So add a localized event to each one of them. And now we have to do this for each of them. Set up how the how the text is set up. Or it's a sign. Uh, uh, text. Okay, so we have this now. Um, we have to replace for names uh, the data type. That okay, and now we have to sign it in the UI. Oh, we'll also need the, the group, uh, a reference to the group, um, because we'll have to, yeah, cool. Yeah, let's add that reference to the group. So, private, uh, let's add serialized field again. Private game object, stat one. this title subtitle private void setup stats I transform this into a, into a list actually it might it, it will be easier to write this I transform this into a list yeah let's do that uh, we need to make a data type so public uh, public class that panel I guess that sure. All of those. Uh, name value.
Okay, that should do it. Now we can get rid of all of those. So, oh yeah, we have to make this serializable. So now here in setup stats, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a for loop. I is okay, and we're gonna do a math min of stats dot length and um, selected weapon dot weapon dot p dot weapon definition dot available stats dot length oh my god that's a mouthful um well that length let's make this a variable and now now let's see what can we do now actually this is the, the full correct um No, yeah, the, the, the for loop is not correct. We have to go through all of the stats. We do need to know this length though. So, so if I is less than however many those are available do that otherwise stat of i dot panel stat active false let's set it true here and here we're gonna do what are we going to do I'm gonna say name String reference is equal to selected weapon dot weapon dot d dot weapon definition dot available seats of i dot name. Damn. Okay. This edit here in the list. Let's bottom the button at the bottom. So they're in a, you know, low order. Now we have we have to set up the stats. That's panel name value. Panel Hey, okay. save and let's play the game. Weapon, click on it, and oh my god, we have damage and fire rate here. Nice. The, the values are still not up yet, but cool. This is actually cool. Nice. Okay, now we only have to to set the um, the multipliers. That's be it. And also we have to localize the, the text in the button. But well, that's like the last thing that we need to do.
now for the for the values how we how we write the the the, the names actually or the values my bad let's get the the exact uh text that we have in here thing paste and I should make this color available uh, from UI but yeah, not right now here we'll have the first value and this is the second value now we have to get the values. So current multiply. Let's see. Selected weapon dot weapon dot d dot weapon definition dot get multiplier for level for that. Yes. Uh, the level is d dot or not uh, is oh, there the weapon that weapon that is and the stat is oh my god oh. Multiplier and the level plus one. Actually, I am going to not in here, but in here. So we're gonna have display level, and we're gonna have just so I don't have to access the data from the outside. You know, it's better. Logic level. Okay. Now the current multiplier is in. Yeah, we have to to, to modify this bit. So we'll have to subtract one and divide this by hundred. And I think I want F zero F zero for formatting. So something like this. X multiplier minus one F divided by one no multiplied my bad. Multiplied by one hundred. Let's let's try this. <laughs> tick, tick. Oh my God. Hell yeah. Nice. Is actually working. Cool. I have to do some fancy formatting for this, but it is actually working. Nice.
Now the only thing left to do is to to localize the uh, the button, the, the 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 text in the button. So let's do that real quick. Uh, we are going to use the same. Uh, actually, no, not in the button, but in the text itself here. We're going to use localize string. Um, let's get the, the text that we have currently. Is happening here. And I, I and and I assume it's because I, I've added those those things here. That's not cool. That's not cool at all. Yeah. Let's try it still. I think it's just a just a pendering issue in the in the UI itself, not uh, that it should work as expected here. So let's set this up. This text and let's add the value, which is gonna be an integer. And it's gonna be called cost. Uh, let's actually assign the correct thing here. Weapon level up button. Okay. And here uh, we have the button and the button text. The button text is going to be a localized event. Now we're going to have some errors, but that's not a problem because. Oh, we have to, to also set up the level. Yeah. So button text dot string reference dot. Uh, no, not not dot, but okay. Okay. Let's also um, no actually yeah we have to add here another uh, feature variable which is level. Let's put it as the first and also let's uh, update the entry here because this should be level. Save and let's try it. Yeah, well, we haven't set up the the reference. That's true. Uh, the button text this. 
save. There we go. And now let's try to, how do I do that? How do I change that? Analysis, no. What have they put? Okay, this is annoying. Uh, where have they put the localization? Oh, here. Actually, let's maximize this. Dot. It's working. Nice. Cool. So the channel is um, fully localized, at least for left to right languages. We, we don't have support for right to left. I mean, not, not even the vision package has support for right to left, so it's not that we can actually do it. But yeah, cool. So we have this. And it and it works. Um yeah. Now the only thing left to do is do this uh, this um uh, yeah, this whole thing for the laser weapon as well which is this one um Actually, no. Uh, um, get back here. Oh, for the laser attack, I haven't added the stat. We have to do that part. Okay. So we have to do some changes to the um, laser attack. Let's start by doing this here. So. Public uh, uh, link, yeah, I have definitely have to rename this to stat. Public link damage stat, and let's copy over those two. So that's one, and in the laser attack. Yeah, that would be in here. Let's look a bit at the projectile attack though. So we're getting the fire rate and then we are multiplying it. So yeah, we'll have to get a reference to the upgrade manager and one for uh, to the level to the weapon level. Okay. Actually, let's copy them over from here. Weapon level and upgrade manager. Those two.
it's not yet ready. The, the 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 right functionality is not yet ready in the localization package. So there's nothing I can do. And also, we're not sure we're gonna do localization for the game, but I'm I'm implementing it as if we were to uh, do localization. Is because it's 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 hard to do it um, afterwards if you do decide to to actually have localization. Okay, what am I doing here? Yeah, so Gonna be equal to d dot dam damage d dot damage multiplied by d dot case manager dot get multiply get multiplier for stat what stat d dot damage stat multiplied by d dot weapon level dot get multiplier for stat d dot damage stat okay. So now we have to, uh, to uh, use this damage here. Okay, so now we have this setup. So we are actually able to, to level up the weapon. Oh, one other thing that we have to do. Yeah, actually, no. Uh, let's put a comment there, but. Uh, Go to the weapon, no, weapon inspector. Uh, I'm not seeing it, yeah, here. Yeah, the problem is that only if we have the, the, the um, infinite levels check the, the the check for infinite levels. Um, only in that case, we, we will always have a next multiplier. Otherwise, there might come a I mean, there will come a, a place where where there is no next level. So we should that we should take that into consideration. But I don't think we're gonna have weapons without uh, infinite levels. So that's why I'm not going to do it right now. Okay, uh, what was I doing? Yeah, so we have the laser attack. Okay, we have to assign some stuff here. First, we need to make a, a stat for this. So, dummy. Laser weapon damage stat. Let's assign the name of the stat with damage stat, save here, and internal, we need the upgrades manager and we need the weapon level. Weapon level data, weapon definition and economy manager. That's for internal and for general, there's nothing for general. Weapon level. Here we assign the weapon level. And for general, yeah, no, that's that's it. 
we're going to save this and in the definition um okay let's set up the currency which is coins available stats we only have one which is this and let's add it so damage stat let's say plus 10 percent costs 10 has infinite levels and this is 20 laser uh let's say 25 and the third level costs 35 coins and it's 50. let's save this let's open the explorer and yeah it doesn't rise that uh that quick Okay, cool. So now everything should be set up uh, so that we can create a laser weapon and upgrade it. So let's try it. Laser, click on it. I can't click on it. Yeah, because we haven't added a clickable component. That is right. Pickable. Um, selected weapon. Laser, click. Hell yeah! Now let's make another one. And I can switch between them. Uh, except for the name. I haven't set up the name. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Yeah, uh, let's set up the name for this. We don't currently have a name for this weapon, so dummy laser weapon. Yeah, yeah, weapon, yeah, that's correct. Paste this, save and assign it. Cool. Let's try it again. Dummy projectile weapon and the a dummy laser weapon. Nice. Cool. I don't really like the the, the fact that the the text changes size, but uh, yeah. Nice. Cool. Nice. Okay. I think this task is done. I don't think there's anything else left uh, on this. So we're going to edit here. Okay.
Let's commit those changes. Yeah, there are a lot of changes because we've updated uh, Odin. I am not going to go through, through the changes, like doing code review. Um, yeah. Maybe some other time. Let's do that. And let's publish. One thing I'm going to do right now is update that or change the name of the uh, the link to stat. Because now it's going to be easy to track if everything is okay because there's nothing changed. So, yeah. Link.cs. And now let's rename this to stat. I'll name stat link stat stat no no and no Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Shit. Okay, we have to fix that as well. Um, let's look at those changes. Okay. Okay. Okay, this looks fine. Uh, the only thing left to do right now is it. Let's see if it works. Seems to, be, it seems to be okay so far. Yeah, this works. Yeah, we are we are good. It is working, actually. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, let's rename this to stat. That should be it. Oh yeah, I said I was going to I was going to fix that. Uh, let's go to set weapon. Uh, we shouldn't get those, those warnings anymore. Let's test it. Refresh. Yeah. And you know, when I refresh, I don't get those anymore. Cool. So let's, uh, let's attach those changes to, to this idea uh, as well. So actually, let's clear it. Oh, come on. Hmm. 
Okay, and I'm going to deselect this. Publish this. Okay, this task is done. So I'm gonna close it. And now we're gonna uh, work on the next one, which as I said, it's the, this is the first power that we're gonna add in the game, which is the zap. And we need this for for those annoying, uh, annoying new enemies, which are the healers. Currently, uh, you can't um, go to the next wave if, um, if, the, if the healers are still alive. So yeah, we need a way to, to kill them. So that's why we, we need the, the we need the power right now. Otherwise, it's it's hard to test uh, to test the game. Um. There, there will be ways of upgrading the powers either through upgrades, which is the, the, the upgrade, the, the passive upgrades, or by uh, upgrading them with coins. But we're not going to do that right now. We only need the the, the, the basic functionality of Zap. So that's what we're going to work on today. And basically, basically, we're gonna work on the foundation of the of the of the powers uh, because uh, this is not the the only one that we're gonna have. There are two more that we're gonna add, or or two more that we are planning to add. Maybe maybe there are gonna be more. Uh, we shall see. But for now, we're only gonna implement this uh, this one. Okay, so first of all, we need a way of um, of detecting the the right mouse uh, uh, button. So we have to change the uh, we have to add some things to the game controls. We have the point click. We are gonna add the pointer secondary click. Um, the right button. Okay, save this. Cool. Now, um, I have, I don't have a clear idea of how I how I want to do this. Um, 
I haven't thought about I haven't thought much about the, the the powers, or I haven't planned for them just yet. So yeah, we'll have to do this in uh, real time. Um. What do we need from the powers, or what we will we will need in the future? So there there should be a way of switching between them. Uh, which we're not gonna do today, uh, but we have to plan for them, or we have to keep them in mind. So we need to be able to switch them. They will affect the enemies, so you'll be able to right click with your mouse, and I don't know what the button is gonna be on the on a controller, but uh, we're only gonna focus on the mouse uh, today. So you'll be able to right click, and uh, yeah. Um, you'll be able to, to target enemies, or yeah, if you click on the enemy, he's, he's going to get damaged by, by the zap. Um, what else? What else? Yeah, as I said, it's gonna be uh, there's gonna be a way of reading the weapon either through uh, passive upgrades or by level. It up. Um, Okay, I think I have an idea of how we can do this, or how to do it in a generic way. And take into consideration that we're going to have some other powers in the future. Um, yeah, so what I'm thinking is the all, all the logic for the for the powers are going to stay in a, uh, in a scriptable object. It's not going to stay in the scene. Um, for the visual aspect of the weapons, we are going to use object pools. We're gonna have pools that are gonna have the the different effects that the the the, the, the powers are gonna have. So, uh, in case there is a for, for for this weapon, it's not the case, but for other weapons, there uh, you you can um. You you might be able to 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 spawn it multiple times and how to say it. Click multiple times and while the animation of the first one is running, shoot another or activate it uh, a second time. So we should be able to to display multiple or the or the same effect multiple times. So that's why I'm thinking about uh, object pools. We're gonna have a we're gonna have pools with the effect of each power, so we can spawn multiple of them in, in case we need them. And actually, that's, that's kind of it. That's kind of it. As, as there's not much to it. It's pretty straightforward what's going to happen and how it's going to, going to work. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's start doing the scriptable object. Let's do some cleanup here, like so. I'm going to make a, a new folder, which is going to be called Powers. Uh, I said folder, not uh, directory. Powers. Yeah, powers. A runtime folder. Uh, 
Huh. I can't show a folder. No, I can't. Great. Cool. So now let's say um no let, let's create a class. Powers manager. Yes, it's going to be a service. Um, I own scene loaded and I own scene unloaded. Let's implement everything. And let's implement them correctly from the get go. There we go. Cool. Now let's do the. Let's do some things here. Wait, what? Simply definition reference based this. Let's go to the inspector runtime and apply. Cool. Yep, everything is set up correctly now. We are going to need a reference um, to the controls manager. There lies field and service dependency. And here in reset, we are going to say control manager dot camera actions dot Pointer secondary click. I'm not gonna add, I'm not gonna need the context though, but yeah, let's just keep it here. So let's call it on secondary click without the pointer. And we're also going to need the position of the of the pointer. So pointer position. Private vector two. Pointer position. There we go. And here on secondary click, we are going to shoot a raycast. Well, first we're gonna make a cast, so let's make a ray first. So, the engine dot, no, camera dot main dot get, uh, Screen point to ray, yeah. Screen point to ray. Um, pointer position. Here we do physics. Nope. Physics dot raycast. Use the ray. We. What else? Uh, yeah. We get the hit. We set maximum distance of um, thousand or one kilometer. Uh, layer mask for now. We're gonna say everything, and we're gonna ignore triggers. Mm. 
we are going to make here private uh, layer. We're going to make a layer mask called enemy layer. We're going to use this here. But actually, not layer, uh, not enemy layer, but let's just call it layer mask because I'm going to add the tower as well so we can't shoot the ray through the tower. Okay. Okay, so we got a hit. And first, we're going to say. We are looking for a for an entity, so we're gonna look for a root. So, by the way, we set up everything. Actually, we're gonna do something like this. Um, it dot uh, slider dot attached rigid body. So if we have a rigid body. And rigid body dot game object dot try component, which is uh, out of our entity root, or let's just call it root. And this component is going to be an entity root, entity root. So now we know it's an entity. And what we need from here is to get the health component. A root get, get component in children. Uh, enemy health. So if uh, if health component is not null let's just do a log for now enemy hit and uh, let's just pass in the root like this okay Okay, now let's think, create menu, create asset menu, menu name, project tower, slash, um, Magic Tower, um, Powers, Powers Manager, Layer Mask, uh, Enemy and Tower. Let's assign the Controls Manager and last things last, uh, let's put the, uh, the Powers Manager here so it's loaded. Okay. So now everything should be set up so that we can. There's oh, actually there's one other thing. Um, not here. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I don't think I want to do unload. 
Or no, let's do uh, copy let's copy this So let's try it now. If everything works, we should be able to right click on enemies and. Well, I said if. <laughs> it looks like it doesn't. Oh, we have some mirrors though. I have an idea. It might just be that our enemies. Let's let's look at the healer. Um, oh, he has a well, a mesh collider, uh, but he's not. Uh, yeah, he doesn't know he's an enemy actually. So let's. Save this as an enemy, and let's look at the others as well. I'm pretty sure that's it's gonna be the same thing for them. Uh, actually, no, this is a sphere collider. This is good. Let's look at the flyer rendering enemy, enemy, enemy. Yeah, that's fine. I'm assuming this is fine as well, and the small one should be wrecked too. Okay, uh, actually the, the, the healer was the only one who was not set up correctly, or at least not, not its, not that prism. There we go. If we quit, if we click anywhere else, nothing happens, but if we right click on the enemy, it works and it selects the correct, uh, the correct thing. Cool, 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 cool. Um, okay, so this is the like this is the generic part of the system. Now we have to make it. Um, now we have to make the actual power the this laser attack. So I think I'm gonna make. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna make them each be a scriptable object. So we're gonna implement scriptable objects. Or should they be scriptable objects? Yeah, I think they should be scriptable objects. We, I think there are something we need to set up on them. Yeah. 
yeah 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 we need to do some things here for sure okay yeah so let's let's create them so we're gonna have let's call this zap power um should it be a service i don't think so uh... yeah i think we need to make, to make the service I'm going to tell you why in a sec. On scene loaded. On scene unloaded. Okay. Yeah, so so what we're gonna do here, um we are going to need a reference to the lifecycle service. Uh because um so serialized field and service dependency. We are gonna going to add uh, not connection. We are gonna do the listener. Like a service, yeah. We're gonna add a listener. Uh, when game is initialized, we are going to do something. initialize and we're gonna remove that listener here in cleanup let's actually put the cleanup under the reset and on uh, on initialize um yeah, we need a reference to the upgrades manager. Serialize field and service dependency. They have I made something on the oh I only have a... and I do need this actually. I only know when I buy an upgrade. Yeah, I'm gonna need that. Yeah, I need to know um I need to know what the upgrades are so I can get the multiplier for for the damage. So so the zap let's put this uh, way above here. So private float we're going to call it damage. We're going to serialize this and private stat damage stat also serialized and indent let's put a space here so what i need to do is when the when the game is initialized i want to
Um, let's call this base damage. Label text, and it's gonna be damage. Private load damage. So here on initial, I'm gonna say damage is equal to base damage multiplied by upgrade ma upgrade manager dot get multiplier for that get multiplier for that get multiplier for upgrade no get multiplier for stat and the stat is damage stat. and this should uh, return one if I don't find it right yeah okay yeah that's correct and I also have to do this uh, private void setup damage so let's move this here we're gonna do setup damage immediately and also upgrade manager the on upgrade bot Um, there we go. To add this to the cleanup as well. Right. On initialize, we look at the upgrade manager, we get the multiplier, and we set up the damage. Uh, we need to make a interface. I power. Uh, I said interface. My power interface is gonna have a public void um, let's call it perform actually no it's gonna be like this and what do we need to to say um uh, I guess we're gonna have a target. And not only that. But actually, no, not a vector tree. Entity root target. And now the power is gonna implement this. My power here. I'm gonna say, yeah. Um, actually, I'm gonna do exactly what I've done in the powers manager. Uh, cause uh, not all the actually, yeah. We I need another way of detecting that this is an enemy. But actually, just by getting it, just by knowing it's an entity, I think it's enough. Um, okay, health component. Wait, what? Wait, no, that take damage. Take damage and how damage damage. And also I need damage type, sure. Primate damage type damage type. Uh, 
uh, it's the other way around. Yeah. Yeah, so if we have an entity root, I I can I can assume it's it's uh, it's me. So we're gonna do. Um, let's see. Private I I power. Hmm. If I use I power, I will have to use serialized. Oh, maybe I don't have to use serialized reference. Hmm, let's try it. Say I power, private I power. Selected, but I think I need to use that maybe. Serialized, yeah, he doesn't know that is this. Uh... No bueno. Um, what now? What now? I mean, I can have a reference to it for now at least. Z power, Z power. Uh, Serialized field and service dependency. Form root. And we need to add a set menu. Project tower slash power slash zap. Okay, let's go to powers. Create the project tower uh, powers. Zap. Uh, no, let's set up this. So zap power, and here, let's say that it has ten damage. Uh, let's set up those life cycle and upgrades. And we need both the. Let's create uh, damage, damage, God damn it. damage, damage type. So zip power damage type. And also need a stat. Like so. And I think this might be it. I think this might be it. Let's play and let's try it. Okay, I'm right clicking like crazy now. He should be already dead, but he's not. So something is not working. Um, let's inspect this. So this is the healer. Let's put up. Oh, uh, I think his I th I think because I put 
the I set it up as an enemy there, the this this triangle thingy. I think he's healing himself. I think he's healing himself. Uh, okay. Um We need to add healer. Enemy detector. Add filters from outside. I hope I can. Yes, I can. I need to add another filter, which says that the the enemy that that is detecting it's not himself. So let's do that. Um, Add filter. Target is different from root dot game object. Oh, actually, yes. Add filter, and do I have one on this? Yes, I do. Okay, that should fix it. Right. Cool. Let's first inspect it. Uh, let's get out of two D. Let's, let's pause this actually. So, enemy detector, yeah, there's nothing in range right now. So now I should be, be right click and it didn't take any damage. That's, that's not cool. Uh, let's pause, uh, let's put a, let's go tap power here. Let's right click again. Okay, so we are here. Who's the target? Killer enemy. Yeah, that's that's correct. We have the component. Let's get inside of it. Okay, the damage type not allowed. That's the problem. Okay. That's that's correct. We have to allow that damage type. So allow damage types. Zep power type. Save. Let's get out. Let's play. And now, now I'm pretty sure this is gonna work. Uh, projectile weapon. Let's click on this. It has 100 health. And now, if I right click, uh, well, yeah, that we have that. Ta da! So now, if I click, uh, keep right clicking. We are damaging him, and now the next right click is die. <gasps> and he did. Let's put a laser there. Oh my god, it worked. Oh, uh, I have to enable damage type for those uh, those enemies as well. But 
Holy shit, we have we have the zip. We don't have any UI or not UI, you know, any visual feedback for it. I might add something. I don't know what I want to add for this, to be honest. And the thing that I said previously with the uh, with the object pools. Yeah, we're still gonna do that. I don't know how. I mean, I no, I know how. I don't, I don't know what we're gonna put in the object pools. Because I don't I don't know what 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 graphics do we want to use for this for the for the zap. But for now, I think it's okay. Now I think the the most important thing that that we still don't have in the game is a way for us to know how much health an enemy has, like a, like a health bar for each. Enemy. I think that's the thing that we we need to to take care of next. Um, because now that we are able to damage them with with a power, uh, we should. Uh, Should we should have a way of, um, of knowing the the health of an enemy? Uh, of an enemy. Okay. Yeah. So the the the, the basic um. The basic implementation of the zap is actually done. We don't have any visual feedback though. And we also need some, some cooldown for it. So we have to do a cooldown for this. But for the cooldown to be, yeah, to, to know about the cooldown, we also need to do the UI so we can display the cooldown. So also, again, visual feedback. So I think what we're gonna do is is um stop the task here so yeah we're gonna stop here we are going to make another task for adding some buttons in the ui for selecting the selecting the weapon so to know which weapon is select, uh, which power i mean actually to, to select the power so we know which one to use and after the UI, then we can add the cooldown. So yeah, so it's in line with uh, with what we've wrote in the GDD. And the last thing will be uh, thinking about how we wanna present this visually to the player, how how the, how the how the power actually looks in the game. And that's when we're gonna do the the whole thing with object pools and uh, whatever visual effect we we end up with. But for now, I think we're gonna stop here. Uh, we have we have the power. We can take care of the healers now. We because previously we were we, whenever there was a healer in the um, in in a wave, we were not able to to go to the next wave because uh, the the healer was still alive. So now we can kill the healer and uh, get on to the next uh, to the next wave. And yeah, we have weapons. We have some some nice UI for for upgrading the the weapons. So we are we are good. We are good. We made some progress this week. It is actually really really nice. Okay, let's uh, let's commit this and um, let's save just in case. Yeah, it seems fine. Stop the the stream here, um, and we're gonna continue next week with I, I don't know what what we're gonna continue with. Uh, we'll see. We need to fix this bug. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, probably we're gonna fix this uh, next stream because uh, the, the the healer should attach itself after the weapon, not not here, but after. Uh, outside of the range of the weapon. Now we can right click on this and 
now we can kill it. I kind of can hit because of the enemies. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Okay, yeah. So we're gonna stop the stream here, and we're gonna continue uh, with playing on the game uh, next uh, next week. So thank you for being here, and see you next time.